Welcome to You Like the Pros. I'm Terry Carter, and you guessed it, we're going to play Sweet Child of Mine, the intro today. Hopefully, I'll play a little bit better <laughs> when we teach it, but we are live, so hey, this is what happens when we go live. So, thanks for being here. I appreciate it, and uh, looking forward to this one. This is a fun one. I just decided last night, I was like, why don't we do this song? So, here we are, we're doing it. <clears throat> I didn't even really know if how possible it was on the ukulele, and of course, this is not the easiest intro in the world on guitar or on ukulele. Tip though for this one, it does help if you have a low G on your fourth string here. If you have a high G, still play, it's just gonna sound slightly different because you really need to You really need to have that kind of bass movement, but hey, we got to work with whatever we got. So don't forget you can leave a comment, ask a question, say hi, whatever you want that we are, as I mentioned, live today. And uh, you probably may hear a little bit of my kids in the background, but you know, that's how we do it over here in the uh, You Collect the Pro studio. So we jump right into it? I say we jump right into it. So I'm going to show you everything that we're playing today first on the screen. You can take a picture of it, um, do whatever you want, and then uh, we'll, we'll uh, go through it. So here we go. Here's the actual sheet music. Just make sure that's right. All right. Boom. There you go. So that's what we're going to be playing today. Notice it says intro, and we're going to play the first four bars. Then it says repeat intro, we go back, and then it says jump to the outro part. All right, so there's what we're looking at. Here I am. All right, so let's just jump to first, uh, the first thing here. This is a repetitive lick that goes over and over again, and the only thing that changes is the very first note of these chords. Now, this is actually not the right key of the recording. The recording is in the key of D, but they detune the guitars, everything a half step. So I thought I had that backing track, but I didn't. So we're going to do this in the key of D. There's my daughter. <laughs> and so the chords for the intro. D to C or C at nine. Do 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 G do 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 and D. So this will work good because it's open position. If you wanted to play it with the recording, the actual Guns N' Roses recording, you would just do everything one fret down. Alright. So what we're looking at here is let me play this first part. I am using my thumb for this one. And follow these fingerings I give you. I think these are the easiest fingerings to play this on. So I would use these. If you come up with something different, that's okay, but I would start with these at least. So I'm gonna start with my first finger here on the seventh fret of the fourth string. And notice how the low G has sounds a little deeper. Then I'm gonna reach out with my pinky here to the second string, 10th fret. All right, octave. Then we're gonna to go to the third string, this is the ninth fret, I'm using my third finger, and then we're going to go to seven on the third string, those are the first four notes. Then my pinky is going to jump up here to first string, tenth fret, back to the ninth fret, third string, then my pinky that was on the first string, tenth fret is going to move back to the first string, ninth fret, and then back to the ninth fret of the third string. So let me play for you, watch how I hold these shapes down too. So. Oops, again. So you want to try to hold your fingers down as much as you can while you're playing the other notes. That way it gives it a real nice legato sound versus a real st staccato sound. So that's not that's not very good. So these are all eighth notes. So just one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and 
So we're going to play this twice because you notice the repeat signs here on the screen. All right, and again, this is over a D chord. So let's play this. Here we go. Nice and slow. One, two, three, and four, and... Now the next part is exactly the same. It's going to be over a C add 9 chord. Or just even like a, a C9 chord. <clears throat> now it's going to be the same thing except for the first note instead of being on the 4th string 7th fret, I'm going to be on the 4th string 9th fret and I'm going to be with my 3rd finger. But everything else is the same except for that starting note. So you know it's going to be 9th fret with my 3rd finger and then pinky on 10th fret 2nd string. 3rd finger then goes on the 3rd string 9th fret. 1st finger on 3rd string 7th fret. My pinky reaches up to the 1st string 10th fret. 3rd finger on the 3rd string 9th fret. Then my pinky on the 1st string sides to the 9th fret. And then back to the 3rd string 9th fret. Everything's the same except for the starting note. So this is going to sound like this. Three, four. So that's the second bar. It's really bar three and four because of the repeat, but really the second chord. So let's play this, what's on the screen, nice and slow. Three and four and. That's too fast. Three and four and one and two and again. It's kind of like a it's your fingers kind of get all jumbled up here. So do it slowly. Take your time with it. Now the next chord goes to a G chord. All right, and the lick is exactly the same as what we've been doing, except now your first note is third string, seventh fret. Again, third string. But then it's exactly the same, so let me play it. All right, so let's just go over it. Now I start on the third string, seventh fret with my first finger. Everything else is the same. Pinky goes to the second string, 10th fret. Third finger goes back to the ninth fret third string. Back to the seventh fret third string. Pinky reaches up to the first string tenth fret. Third finger on the third string ninth fret. Pinky slides on the first string from the tenth fret to the ninth and back to the third string ninth fret. And then of course, as you see, repeat. Repeat the whole thing. So here we go again on this, or here we go for the first time on this G chord. Three and four and and then repeat then what it does is it goes back to the D chord again that's not it let me take this off so it goes back to the D chord again and this is not the beginning this is the end so the D starts this lick and then ends in a well so let's do the D here and remember when we do the D that it's on the first string, I'm sorry, first finger is on the fourth string, seventh fret. And do it two times. Three and four and. Then you repeat the whole thing again, starting on that same chord again, the D chord. So let's try all of it now, the first, this is the first, uh, let me see if this is the right, it. nope, that's the, end. that's the wrong one. Nope, there we go, that's what I want. So let's try this, I know it's a little crammed, but notice we do the D twice, the C add nine twice, the G twice, and then the D twice, and then we repeat the whole thing. All right, so nice and slow, one, two, three, and four, and. Nine. We're just C chords, fine. G. And then 
and back to D. Now you're going to repeat what you see on the screen going back to the D chord. And it's going to play the D chord again, the C add 9 chord again, the G again. And then, though, the last time here is going to have a slightly different ending than what we just did. And here's the ending part. All right, so after we go back, we do the D again. Then the C add 9. Then the G. Now we're going to play this the outro. It's not the outro of the entire song. It's just the outro of the intro. And then it's going to sound like this. And then we play it again. So I'm playing exactly what's on the screen. Three and... You gotta watch the tuning, tuning up here a little bit. Okay, this is a little tricky, but not really not much trickier than the rest of it. But it is a little tricky. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start with my first finger, and it's going to I just kind of naturally bar strings one, two, and three. Although you really just need the first string, but I kind of just naturally bar for some reason. So anyway, the important thing is that you're covering the first string, seventh fret. Then your third finger is on the third string, ninth fret, and your pinky is on the second string, tenth fret. And the picking pattern for this is slightly different than what we've seen before. Still using my thumb, but it's going to go first string, third string, second string, back to the third string. And I'm going to hold the shapes here. This is a little bit more arpeggio-like here. So again, just the, the first bar right here, which is, uh, or I guess part of that first bar. First string, third string, second string, third string. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit that first string again, third string again. But now I'm going to take my pinky and I'm going to add it to the first string, ninth fret, and then back to the third string, ninth fret. So now that's that first, just this part, the first measure. So let me play it. Three, four, and... All right, now we're looking at the second bar here, and it's gonna, my pinky here on the first string, ninth fret's gonna jump up to the 10th fret, still on the first string. My third finger is still here on the third string, ninth fret. Then the pinky's gonna slide back to the first string, ninth fret, back to the third string, ninth fret. Then I'm gonna lift up my pinky, I'm gonna play the first string, seventh fret, back to the third string, ninth fret. Then my pinky is going to go back to where it started on the second string, 10th fret, and then third string, 9th fret. And then you're going to hit a little double stop at the end, which is going to be 9th fret of the third string, 10th fret of the second string. And you're just going to hit both of those strings as a double stop. So notice for this, you never have to release your third finger on the third string, 9th fret. And you don't have to release your first finger on the first string, seventh fret. That can stay the whole time. So notice. The only thing that was moving was the pinky on that one. All right, so let's try what's on the screen here. Three and four and one and... Then you get right into the verse. You got a smile, seems to me, right? All right, let's try it one more time. Just this little outro part. Three and four and. And boom. And then, that's, that's it. So that's a whole intro right there. So let's try the whole thing. Not with that backing track, which was proven to be a little fast for me even. Um, but let's try it slow without a backing track, and then we'll try it with the backing track. Um, so I don't know why I thought about this, but I uh, got home real late last night from L.A., probably like 12.30. And 
then I had to do some work here before I got home. So I didn't actually get to bed until about 1.30. I didn't actually look at the clock. You know, sometimes you look at the clock, you're, you're scared to see what time it is because you know how little sleep you're going to get. And I knew that because I get up at 4.30 every morning. And so I knew I was only going to get a few hours sleep. So that's okay. I was, feeling, I was feeling excited about the day. But after I did a couple hours of my morning routine, I, uh, I uh, kind of passed out <laughs> when I was doing my, my meditation, visualization. So I had a dream. It was really funny. I had a dream about a, a buddy of mine named Andrew Weston. And he plays in a group called Group Love. And they're a super awesome, super popular um, pop kind of pop rock band that's really big right now. And uh, it was weird. I haven't talked to him for a while. And I don't even know why I'm telling you this. I'm just telling you this because subconsciously I was thinking about him and he, and he was in my, my dream. So if anyone out there is a fan of group love, uh, Andrew Weston is the uh, mainly the guitar player. He also does some, some singing and amazing musician, songwriter, all that. But if you don't like group love, check them out. They're, uh, they're pretty amazing. All right, let's try this without a backing track, just nice and slow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this here real quick. I'm going to throw this up and this up. Nope, hold on, I got to do one thing here. All right, so we're going to do we're going to do this technique. Here we go, and go live. There we go. All right, so here's the whole thing. Let's see how we do with the uh, just nice and slow counting. Nice and slow, no worries here. One and two and three and four and. Now the C add nine chord. And now the G chord. Now back to D. Now you go back to the beginning again, so D again here. Now C add 9. Now the G. Now here's that outro. stuff at the end. All right, so let me come back here. So now we're going to try it with this backing track. So it's a little faster than that, and hopefully I can redeem myself here and, and knock this out. So here we go. We're going to do exactly the same thing though. All right, we ready? We pumped? I hope so. Here we go. That's going to do it for our Sweet Child of Mine intro. Good luck with that, and we'll see you in the next lesson.